So it seems like just par for the course at this point, but of course I'm editing a new video coming out soon sometime next week and something big drops, of course, but this time it's not from Universal. This time it's actually from Horror Night Nightmares. And if you're not familiar with that name, this is basically the greatest source when it comes to Halloween Horror Night speculation, rumors, and so forth. And they're pretty well known for their yearly speculation maps that sort of lead fans towards the direction that Halloween Horror Nights might take They've been pretty accurate in the past, and the first one for this year, for 2023, has come out. So, of course, we had to talk about it here. So, this video, I'm just going to be kind of candidly breaking down my thoughts, breaking down what I think could be uh, the direction that Halloween Hornets might be taking, what I think could be staying, what I think could be dropping off of this map. Because, for those who don't know, these maps are ever changing. Uh, the first map is not exactly what you're going to get in the final product. There will be things added, things subtracted. So, don't get married to any ideas just because you never know if it's going to change or just be canned completely. So looking at this map, we have 10 haunted houses, five scare zones. I wanted to talk first about the IPs because I made a whole video about IPs, so I'm not going to spend as much time talking about IPs here. First up, we have Chucky, which was of course confirmed on October 31st of last year, of course, based on the sci-fi series, which I have watched both seasons of and really enjoyed uh, certain aspects of it. So I'm curious to see how they're going to train translate some of the key scenes, key moments to this haunted house. The next one we have is another installment in the Horrors of Blumhouse series, this time featuring Megan and Insidious. If this does pan out, I think this would be a great way to incorporate Megan into the event, pairing her with a more serious, darker IP like Insidious. It seems like that has been the trajectory of these Blumhouse houses to pair a more comedic property with a more serious one and sort of create that balance. So I think this could be a really solid addition to the lineup, bringing two fan favorite Blumhouse IPs to the event. The next one we have is another mashup, but this time featuring the Universal Monsters. Now, these guys have been a staple of Halloween Hornets over the past few years. I made a whole video talking about the Universal Monsters, but this one features specifically the Phantom of the Opera and, of course, Dracula, which is an interesting combination. I'm pretty surprised that this is the route they're going with, considering these are two seemingly disconnected characters other than existing within the same universe. I'm curious if this is going to be as lore-heavy as Legends Collide, kind of a whole interconnected story explaining how they're meeting. It doesn't suggest that they're fighting uh, like Legends Collide. It just says that they're going to meet. So uh, I wonder what that will entail. And uh, honestly, this is the one out of all of these IPs that I'm the most excited for and the one that I think has the most incredible uh, potential when it comes to the story. So definitely looking forward to this one if it makes it. And finally, we have The Last of Us, which I didn't talk about in that IP video, but it makes sense. The Last of Us is a super popular show right now. Everyone's talking about it. It's getting great reviews from fans and critics. Of course, the Netflix partnership that gave us Stranger Things and Haunting of Hill House seems to have fallen off, unfortunately, uh, but this could mean new horizons for Halloween Horror Nights partnering up with HBO, doing some Warner Brothers properties because it's all linked uh, together, and maybe The Last of Us could just be the beginning of that. The Last of Us is a great property to incorporate into a haunted house that has that gritty, uh, realistic feel, but that's that being said, let's move on to the meat of the video, the originals. So the first original we have here is something called Lair of the Banshees, which immediately makes me interested. Of course, the title is in reference to the HHN 26 scare zone of the same name, and I would really love to see them expand that scare zone, considering it was quite small and limited with the characters and mythos that they were using. Maybe bring in some Celtic lore, as Banshees do have quite a tie with Celtic mythology and legends. And some of the designs for these characters are really interesting, really scary, and can lend themselves to a very well done original haunted house. Could do something really scenic, really epic. This one is one I really hope makes it. The next one we have is one that I have wanted for quite a while, Devil Dogs. And for those who are unsure of what Devil Dogs are, Devil Dogs was one of the movies featured in my favorite original Halloween Horror Nights house, HHN 28's Slaughter Cinema. Adapting a full-on Devil Dogs house 
is genius. I always thought it would be fantastic as either House or Scare Zone. And I know a lot of other fans love Slaughter Cinema. And I think it's just really exciting to have the possibility of seeing Slaughter Cinema returning. I know a lot of people have wanted a sequel, but honestly, I would just love for them to explore uh, some of these Slaughter Cinema movies in their own houses. They already did it once with Yeti Terror and the Yukon, obviously being a sort of sequel to the Swamp Yeti from Slaughter Cinema. So I would just love them to explore all of the Slaughter Cinema movies uh, as Haunted Houses, Scare Zones. I think it would be a great concept. I think there's a lot they can do with it. Uh, and I think it would be a good way to sort of bring werewolves to the event without doing the Wolfman. Because we've done the Wolfman already. We've already done him in the Monsters and in the Legends of Clyde House. I feel like this could be a, a fun time. Maybe not the scariest thing imaginable, but definitely a good time nonetheless. Moving up, we have Krampus. Obviously, they've done Krampus before based on the Michael Doherty movie, but I would really love to see their take on Krampus as an original. I think it could be much, much scarier than the movie made it so. Uh, just the creature design itself just gets me excited uh, thinking about what they can do with the Krampus character. And come on guys, bring Krampus to the actual house. The one in 2016 did not have any Krampus. You need to actually have Krampus scaring people. They did the Krampus boutique over in Allen's Adventure with a lot of original theming and original sort of storytelling in that store. That could have been a little hint at what they're doing with Krampus this year. Maybe even set it in like a little European town, almost like a little village. I think a lot of people have been speculating a Dark Christmas original house and I think it would be a good one regardless of whatever theme they're going for. Krampus, I'm liking that idea. Now the next one on the map is the one that I think has the most people talking. This one is one of the cryptic ones that has no name officially, but we have a image of a guitar and a lightning bolt. Maybe they're gonna do a rock metal themed house this year. Of course, last year we had The weekend as a sort of the musical act uh, turned house. I know Metallica was rumored a few years ago. I know people have always talked about Ghost and Kiss and a lot of different acts. Iron Maiden um, that would make really interesting Halloween Horror Nights houses. It's been a while since we've gotten a metal act involved in Halloween Horror Nights, at least here in Orlando. Of course, Slash has been important over in Hollywood doing the music for the Universal Monsters houses. This could be not even a metal band at all. It could be The weekend for all we know. Uh, this is honestly the most, uh, the hardest one to sort of break down and to really talk about because we don't have any clue of what this could be. But this honestly doesn't give us much to go with. So I'm just gonna be under the pretense that we're doing a, another rock uh, music themed house. And honestly, I'm not mad at it. Uh, I enjoy the music themed houses. Moving up, we have another uh, house that's just signified by a clue. This one, an anchor. And of course, everybody jumps to Dead Men's Pier sequel. You know, Dead Men's Pier was very, very popular last year. A very beloved house. As much as I enjoyed it, I did think it was one of the better houses last year. I think it was a beautiful house, really well done. I just think that it's too soon to do a sequel, and I don't really see where that house warrants a sequel. It was a very self-contained story. However, what I think it could be is possibly something to have to do with another sort of sailing tradition of, hear me out, sirens. You know, the folklore is there. I think it could be really fun to do a sort of siren themed, maybe something pirate themed. I think a pirate themed house would be really fun. And we haven't gotten a pirate house in quite a while, at least from what I can remember. Uh, I think they could reuse a lot of the stuff they did in Dead Men's Pier, sort of create like a spiritual sequel or maybe even a prequel sort of tying the story together with Dead Men's Pier. Maybe even tie it into Dead Waters, which is a very beloved haunted house. Maybe this is a sequel to Dead Waters. Uh, I know a lot of people have been wanting a sequel to that house and I think it's far enough away where you could do that really well. This one again is pretty open for interpretation but if it is any of those things I'm down. Finally the last one we have is a bunch of Japanese characters. Now this one I think is the most cryptic out of all of the ones I already suggested. At least the other ones were images. This is just uh, text in Japanese. The, the prevailing theory is that this is going to be sort of a translation of the spirits uh, of East Scare Zone they had in Hollywood, sort of playing on Japanese horror and Japanese sort of mythology. And I think that would be incredible. I think it would be really cool to see more cultural uh, based 
based horror at Halloween Horror Nights. Of course, last year we got Fiesta de Chupacabras, which was a really uh, amazing house. One of my favorites. I know it wasn't a lot of people's favorites, but I really love that Chupacabra house. I think pulling some stuff from that scare zone in Hollywood that was really popular and really well loved, while also adding some new ideas. Pretty excited about this one. I think this one could be a really solid one if it uh, does pan out. But anyway, this is just sort of a rambly video talking about the speculation map. I wanted to do one of these when the first speculation map came out. I'm not sure if I'm going to do them for the other speculation maps. It, I'm, I might. Uh, it just depends on if there are any huge changes um, that I think are worth talking about. I have a bunch of videos coming out within the next week to two weeks. Uh, you know, this one just kind of came out of nowhere, but I have two big videos coming out soon that you're going to want to stay tuned to see. So if you liked this video, liked Halloween Horror Nights, hit the subscribe button, leave a like on the channel. Um, it would really be appreciated. If you like videos like this, sort of talking about Halloween Horror Nights, talking about my thoughts and stuff, uh, theme parks related, not just Halloween Horror Nights. Also, I wanted to let you all know that my social medias are in the description below. I never really talk about them in the videos, but I want to let you know, uh, specifically uh, in regards to Instagram, just because I do post a lot of behind the scenes stuff, fun stuff in, over there, and uh, Twitter as well. I know Twitter's kind of a controversial topic right now, but um, I do have both of those platforms and I do post on there quite frequently. So if you want to keep up with the Dreamport Productions, uh, head over there. Anyways, I want to thank you all for watching this video again. Thanks to Horror Night Nightmares for putting out a spec map in February, giving us something to talk about, of course. That's pretty awesome. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go, uh, and uh, I will see you all in the next one. Possibly another Halloween Horror Nights history video, kind of. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next one. Stay spooky.